The Smith chart was invented by Philip Smith of Bell Telephone Laboratories and is a graphical tool to assist in solving radio frequency problems involving transmission lines and matching circuits. There are several questions in the Amateur Extra question pool about the Smith chart, so hopefully this video will help those studying for the Extra Class license. Creating a Smith chart begins with the definition of the reflection coefficient, gamma, from transmission line theory. Gamma is defined as the load impedance, Z sub L, minus the transmission line characteristic impedance, Z sub zero, divided by the sum of these two impedances. Note that the load impedance can be a complex number if it is comprised of resistive and reactive elements, that is, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. The transmission line characteristic impedance is usually assumed to be resistive with a value of 50 ohms. The magnitude of gamma is between 0 and 1. The voltage standing wave ratio is then calculated from 1 plus the absolute magnitude of gamma divided by 1 minus the absolute magnitude of gamma. One more important thing concerning Smith charts. We can rewrite the formula for gamma in terms of Z sub L divided by Z sub 0. This is called the normalized load impedance, which I designate as Z50 sub L. So for all the examples in this video, the actual impedances, resistive or reactive, will be normalized to 50 ohms, or in other words, will be divided by 50. So let's look at the gamma plane, showing a value of gamma with its real part plotted along the horizontal axis and its imaginary part plotted along the vertical axis. Now don't worry, this is the most we'll need to know about complex number arithmetic. Now if one uses the definition of impedance as resistance and reactance, it turns out that the plots of constant resistances are a series of circles whose diameter is related to the resistance value. All these circles are tangent to the value of 1 along the real gamma axis. Now it turns out that lines of constant reactance are circular arcs that have one end terminating on the value of 1 on the real gamma axis. Inductive reactances are above the real axis and capacitive reactances are below the real axis. So here is a complete impedance Smith chart with both constant resistance and constant reactance curves. It should be emphasized that the use of a Smith chart implies a single frequency situation. There are several names associated with features on the Smith chart. The outer circle is called the reactance axis, and the horizontal line through the center of the chart is called the resistance axis. Finally, the center point in the Smith chart is referred to as the prime center. One last thing we need to know is what happens if we connect a length of lossless transmission line to a load. Since the standing wave ratio is constant with a lossless transmission line, this is represented by a series of circles positioned on the center of the Smith chart. Larger diameters mean higher standing wave ratio. If one were to transverse 360 degrees around a constant standing wave ratio circle, it would mean a transmission line of one half wavelength. Moving clockwise means moving the end of a transmission line toward the generator or toward the transmitter. And moving counterclockwise means moving the end of a transmission line towards the load. We'll see how this all works in some examples later in this video. So far we've been looking at the impedance version of the Smith chart. Now let's take a look at its dual, the admittance Smith chart. The admittance is the inverse of the impedance and is comprised of two parts. G is called the conductance and B is the susceptance. Both are measured in a unit called Siemens. As a reminder, let's take a look at the definitions of the inductive and capacitive reactances. The inductive reactance is positive, 
but the capacitive reactance is negative. Thus, in the impedance Smith chart, the top half represents inductances, and the bottom half represents capacitances. We can calculate both G and B from the resistance, R, and the reactance, X, of the impedance. One thing to notice is that B, the susceptance, will be the opposite sign from the reactance. In an admittance chart, the top half still represents inductances, but now with a negative sign, and the lower half still represents capacitances with a plus sign. So, how do you know whether to use the admittance Smith chart or the impedance Smith chart? Well, it depends on how you want to combine resistors, capacitors, or inductors. If you're combining elements in parallel, you want to use the admittance chart. That's because to combine two admittances in parallel, you just add their admittance values. Similarly, if you're combining elements in series, you want to use the impedance chart. The combination of two series components is the sum of their impedances. If you're going to be adding some components in series and some in parallel, it may be helpful to show and use both Smith charts at the same time. For sure this looks messy and confusing, but after we do an example later in this video, hopefully it will make more sense. Let's look at several examples. Here's the general procedure. First plot the load impedance or admittance point on the impedance or admittance Smith chart. Then determine a plan to move this point along lines of constant resistance, reactance, conductance, susceptance, or constant standing wave ratio to ultimately land on the R equals 1 or G equals 1 circle. Then finally move on these circles by combining reactance or susceptance to terminate on the center of the chart where the standing wave ratio is 1 to 1. So here's the first example with a normalized load impedance of Z equals 0 0.4 plus J 0 0.5. Remember the normalized impedance is the actual impedance divided by 50. At 14.1 megahertz, the actual impedance would be a resistance of 20 ohms in series with an inductor of 0 0.28 microhenries. One way to move to the R equals 1 circle is to move on a constant arc representing a standing wave ratio of 3.2, which means that we would insert a transmission line 0.086 wavelengths long in series with the load impedance. At 14.1 megahertz, this will be 1.53 meters of Belden 9913RG8 coaxial cable, which has a velocity factor of 0 0.84. This takes us to a point on the Smith chart with a normalized impedance of 1 plus J 1.2. Now to get to the center of the Smith chart, we want to slide around the R equals 1 circle by adding a reactance of minus J 1.2 or a capacitive reactance in series with a magnitude of 1.2. So by adding 1.53 meters of RG8 transmission line and a capacitor of 182 picofarads in series to the load impedance at 14.1 megahertz, we have converted a standing wave ratio of 3.21 to a standing wave ratio of 1.0. The next example starts with a normalized load impedance of Z equals 0 0.4 plus J 0 0.2. This is a resistance of 20 ohms in series with a 0 0.11 microhenry inductor at 14.1 megahertz. The strategy here is to start along the constant R circle towards a larger value of reactance. This means adding a series inductance with a reactance of 0 0.29. Now let's look at the admittance Smith chart. 
and we see we can follow the constant conductance circle G equals 1 to the center of the chart. Therefore, we add a capacitive susceptance of 1.23. So by adding an inductance of 0.16 microhenries followed by a parallel capacitance of 276 picofarads, we have converted a standing wave ratio of 2.62 to a standing wave ratio of 1.0. The final example has a normalized load impedance of Z equals 2.0 minus J 1.0. This is a resistance of 100 ohms in series with a 226 picofarad capacitor at 14.1 megahertz, which equates to a standing wave ratio of 2.62. We're showing the admittance Smith chart because the strategy is to move to the left on the circle of constant susceptance and then move upward on the G equals 1 circle to the center of the chart, which means adding two parallel components. The starting point is an admittance of Y equals 0 0.4 plus J 0.2. First, we add a normalized conductance of 0.6, which is equal to a normalized resistance of 1.67, or 83.5 ohms. Next, we move upward on the G equals 1 circle by adding a susceptance of minus 0.2. This is an inductor of 2.82 microhenries. So, by adding a parallel resistor and inductor, we have converted a standing wave ratio of 2.62 to a standing wave ratio of 1.0. Now in this last example, we found a solution with two parallel components. It may not be the best solution because it involves a resist development that will dissipate some of the RF energy before it gets to the load. So let's look again to see if there is a solution that uses only capacitors and inductors that for ideal components don't dissipate any power. This time we'll concentrate on the admittance chart and start upward on a curve of constant conductance and add a parallel inductance with a susceptance of minus 0 0.69. If we now switch to the impedance chart, we see that the admittance Y equals 0 0.4 minus J 0 0.49 now lies uh, on the constant resistance circle R equals 1 with Z equal 1 plus J 1.23. Now the final step is to add a series capacitor with a reactance of minus 1.23 which ends up at the prime center or a standing wave ratio of 1.0. So at 14.1 megahertz we added a parallel inductor of 0.82 microhenries and a series capacitor of 184 picofarads and converted a standing wave ratio of 2.62 to a standing wave ratio of 1.0. Let's review what we've seen about Smith charts. They are a graphical tool for solving transmission line problems and matching circuits. There are really two Smith charts, the impedance chart and the admittance chart. The impedance Smith chart is based on the reflection coefficient from transmission line theory and is comprised of constant resistance circles and constant reactance arcs. The outer boundary is called the reactance axis and the horizontal line is called the resistance axis and the prime center represents a perfect match to the characteristic impedance of a transmission line. The other curve that's relevant to a Smith chart are circles of constant standing wave ratio centered on the prime center. The admittance Smith chart is comprised of circles of constant conductance and arcs of constant susceptance. Which version of the Smith chart that's appropriate depends on whether components are added in series or in parallel.
A Smith chart solution for a transmission line or a matching circuit is only valid for a single frequency, and all components are normalized to the characteristic impedance of a transmission line, normally a resistive value of 50 ohms.